Hello and welcome to episode 135 of Retro Encounter, the RPG Fan Weekly podcast of many topics. I'm Mike Zlosi, I'm your host this week, as I've been in many weeks. I, I'm, in a, I'm on a bit, of a, uh, a bit of a combo here that might be broken sometime soon, I don't know. Well, we'll, we'll see. But I'm here with three other people who are eager to talk about uh, our game for this month, starting with Alana Higgs. Hey everyone. Also, Peter Treisenberg. It's me, Mario. No, it isn't. You're Peter Treisenberg. We've been over this, it, Peter. Okay. It's me, Peter. You can't prove anything. <laughs> I have my rights. Oh, boy. Oh, Peter. <laughs> I baked a cake for you. See, now you've all over. Oh, no. Me, oh. I didn't know him. Yeah, okay, <laughs> let's just get our Mario voices out of the way right now. Oh, boy. <laughs> wow. Wow. But who is that? who's that uh, third person? Oh, it's Stephanie Sabidlo. It's a me, Staffio. <laughs> well, <laughs> if it weren't already obvious, we were talking about a specific Mario game today, and that is Super Mario RPG: Legend of the Seven Stars for the Super Nintendo. Um, Just is a... seven? There's been like a billion of these things, man. Yeah, that's true, and in every single Mario RPG, I think we mentioned this because uh, uh, we did a Mario RPGs episode last year that uh, you were on with me, um, Peter. You're always collecting oh, yeah. somewhere between five and seven stars in these various games. Hmm. Some sometimes they're pieces of stars, sometimes they're actual stars. It's uh, they usually have different colors. Yeah. It's it's kind of a thing, and this is the one that started gonna... it many pieces the bean star actually broke into real quick so i can double check your math i think it's i think it was five for the bean star i think rpg i think it was five yeah and then yeah but the the mario rpgs have a long history of stars breaking into pieces Mm -hmm. and then having to collect them Mm -hmm. and uh for this for this episode we uh we're gonna divide our discussion of mario rpg in two so for this episode we're only doing the first four stars in the game we are stop we're stopping our story discussion and discussion after star hill so we've collected the blue green orange and violet stars but not the indigo yellow or red stars yet yes there are the seven rainbow colors sorry for the spoiler <laughs> but um <laughs> just roll. That's a big about, one man yeah, colors of those stars Speaking Actually, of you know what? As a Sentai oh, fan, sorry. I feel that does work for you. Oh, of course it does. God, are you talking? Yeah. Are you kidding? I love it when things are divided into groups and have different corresponding <laughs> colors. It's like my favorite <laughs> thing. Oh my god! Uh, As a and, former I'm Sailor detect- Moon enthusiast, I feel you. Right? Mm-hmm. I'm detecting. Oh, yeah. a, I'm detecting some Sentai in the room right now. <laughs> oh, you'll you'll be detecting more Sentai in the room eventually, but we'll uh we'll, we'll save that for another day. Um, and and also Toei did both Super Sentai and Sailor Moon, so they're really onto something there. With those, you know, transforming multicolored heroes. Correct me if I'm wrong, Peter and Alana, this is your first full run-through of the game for both of you. Is that right? Uh, yeah, you're right. Yeah, okay. never touched it. And, and, and Peter, you, this is your first time playing the game to completion as well, right? Played, like, the first bit of it a couple times, but never beaten it, so... Right, okay. So I, I was excited to hear that, because I, I love, you know, hearing... Uh, a mix of veteran and new perspectives when we do these games. But, um, Stephanie, you have uh, played Mario RPG before, right? Yeah, I've beat it like three times. Cool. Yeah, for, for me it's also about the third time. I think I played yeah. this once on the SNES ages ago, once on the PC when I was emulating everything like a decade ago. And I then, think we all had that phase. There was yeah. one summer where I was basically <laughs> sucked in doing just that. Yeah, exactly. And I'm, <laughs> I'm playing this time on my... Uh, on my SNES Mini or SNES Classic, or whatever you want to call it, and it's uh, it's Woo! working very well when the save function works, and I don't accidentally lose an hour of progress. <laughs> uh, oh god, those SNES buttons are really—it's really hard to get used to them because two buttons do the same thing. So like, yeah, and and, and um and the it, it, like A erases your save file, and Y overwrites the save file, no. and uh, and they don't really give you a warning. So when like I'm like, okay, load the save file, A to confirm what it's gone. No, like it was that was a that was a bad afternoon. I basically had to replay all of Moville, Moville and Booster's Tower. Wow. Uh, twice, oh dear. Which is the longest stretch. Yeah, really. Yeah, it's mm. a long itch stretch at least. But uh Alana, what's your early impressions on uh this game? Are you enjoying it so far? Yeah, I mean I went into it knowing that it would be funny and I'm not dissatisfied as of yet. So yeah, I'm really enjoying it. It's just cute and charming and the thing is with Mario RPGs is they're always a little bit against the grain. So they're pretty simple, but they've always got their own kind of personality. So I've played a couple of the uh, Super Mario RPG, um, the Mario Luigi games, uh, maybe two or three. Um, I've played both Paper Mario 
traditional RPGs to so the N64 one and Thousand Year Door. <laughs> Thousand Year Door is fantastic, and I would oh, recommend you, it to anybody. You played the two good so ones. Good. Yeah, I've, <laughs> I've, I've played some of Super Paper Mario as well, but it was so weird that I had to stop and like yeah. breathe for five minutes because that went places. Like these games can get dark, but Super Mario RPG is like probably the kids' tame nice version and i'm really enjoying it like i had a blast to be honest it was great so far so i can't wait to dig in and one thing i think is funny is it kind of takes place before like official names seem to have set in like they keep calling peach toadstool yeah exactly and it and actually when i'm playing it it reminds me of watching the old cartoons because i watched those growing up and peach was called toadstool in those as well and yeah, it's just really great. It's like playing a Saturday morning cartoon and it's like, oh, <laughs> these strange people have invaded Mario's world and it's like, oh, no, we've got to do something. And there's Yoshi occasionally and Bowser's involved. And... <laughs> but Bowser's called Bowser and not Cooper. That's the only thing that's broken the TV show thing. So Yeah, well, I mean, he, he, Bowser has mm-hmm. always been uh, Koopa O or Koopa King or something in the ja- in the Japanese games. So they, hmm. uh, I, I think that Bowser is mostly a... Uh, English language invention, but I guess it's a correct. bit more threatening sounding than Koopa to us. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> maybe. But, but uh, Peter, what are your early impressions of Mario RPG before we get uh, deep into the story? Um, as most, as, as a lot of our listeners may know, Superstar Saga was a game I was really into. I'm literally fawful in this chat right now. So, uh, um, playing it now, I, I agree with you guys that it kind of gives me vibes of the the Saturday morning cartoon. It kind of has this episodic feel. In in a way, it kind of reminds me of a good version of Mystic Quest, Final Fantasy Mystic Quest. In in that square, like they wanted to make a beginner RPG that was kind of that would introduce players to the genre. And with the ki- kind of the kid friendly tone of this game, it's it's uh, it, it kind of I feel like it, it hits that more than anything else. It kind of feels like this is the game you would give to your uh, your small child because you want to introduce them to uh, the wonderful world of SquareSoft RPGs. It is a and, little uh, easy. Like by the end, I remember I was just kind of trying to run from battles or just not get into them. Yeah, I, I think yeah, it's a couple boss fights might be tricky, but this is a uh, this is a fairly simple RPG. I don't think any of the dungeons last more than fifteen or twenty minutes, except for maybe the very last one or something. It's very bite size. Like you can play it in short sessions um, mm. and still get like a complete little little segment done, like the forest area or the sewer area near the beginning. Yeah, it, it's brisk. Like, I mean, the first time I sat down to play it, I had two stars before I could even think of what I was doing. It's, uh, yeah, so it, it's fast-moving, um, it's very colorful, uh, it doesn't really have many darker, mature themes, but I, <laughs> I'm consistently having fun with, uh, with all of it. The Saturday morning cartoon, uh, comparison's interesting, I hadn't really thought of that. But, uh, there's also some remarkable names attached to this game. It was, for many years, I think maybe it's changed by now, but it was the only game for a while that had uh, Final Fantasy creator Sakaguchi and Mario creator uh, Miyamoto um, attached to this same project, which is, you know, interesting. And also, a milestone, is... no, m- yeah, more, no, more so now. <laughs> yeah, and mm-hmm. also, uh, this is, I don't want to say early, because she had been composing for over a decade by this, but this is a, uh, a early-ish Yoko Shimomura soundtrack. It was, uh, she mm-hmm. was, I think, an in-house composer with Capcom for many years, and then she started working on on Square games and other games in the mid '90s, and uh, and you know she went on to make all of what the. She worked on with Capcom. I didn't know that. Um, she yeah. did. She did more than half of Street Fighter Two, and uh, really? yeah, and oh, uh, man. and parts of Final Fight, and I think she was on a on a team that worked on one of the Breath of Fire games. I'm not sure. I'd have to Google that. I could be wrong about that. But but yeah, she was with Capcom for a while before she seemed to have some kind of thing with Square. And, but, and then she went on to do Legend of Mana and Kingdom Hearts and the Mario and Luigi games. But uh, and uh, the she's rest much is history. Yeah, she's very beloved among RPG fan staff. That's for sure. But anyway, I definitely is... I, I definitely recognize some of the music tracks playing Mario RPG. I think they did some remixes in later Mario and Luigi games. They did, and, uh, yeah. and um, Gino has a cameo in the first Mario and Luigi as, as a proctor for one of the mini games. <laughs> but then they removed, or rather they removed his <laughs> cameo. Saying... Yeah, or rather, he did. R.I.P. <laughs> yeah, they, they removed the cameo for uh, uh, for the 3DS cover. Um, cover. Whoops. The three the 3DS uh, remake of that game last year. Oh, well. Yeah. Yeah, it was a bummer. Yeah. Right, but regardless, this is a Miyamoto slash Sakaguchi uh, produced game with music by Yoko Shimomura and. That's a remarkable confluence of names, but let's get into the basic setting first. Um, 
uh, Mario RPG also uses a bunch of things like, uh, oh, like some basic sound effects from Super Mario World, and even has a, a world that you traverse by, you know, walking from little circle to circle <laughs> connected by pads and dots, just like Super <laughs> Mario World. Um, what are there any other like Mario traditional things that you noticed or particularly appreciated in this game? I mean, I, 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 I think the game is off to a really good start by basically emulating the entire, you know, fight that Mario usually has. It's just another day and Mario's off to go save Peach again. And like they're almost <laughs> literally next door neighbors to each other where he goes to his castle and rescues. And you even see like the lava pit that uh, that was you know sort of made famous already, uh, you know, mm-hmm. before he reaches the end of the hall and they have it out on the chandeliers. Yeah, it's a pretty action packed first 15 minutes or so, so even cool. though even though it's one of the easiest Bowser battles i've ever encountered ever <laughs> but then uh if it goes sour very quickly after he's about to rescue peach a giant sword from the sky pierces bowser's castle sends mario peach or the princess i should say and bowser flying and then uh it's revealed that mario's opponents for most of this game are going to be the smithy gang which are mostly you know anthropomorphized weapons i guess <laughs> <laughs> and uh yeah. i guess it fits well, no. Oh my sure. god, I didn't even realize that. Really? So, no. <laughs> Some of them, I guess. Yeah, well, no, because it throws in the other ones, right? Like the big tiger thingy. Yeah, there, there, there are there are some non uh, some non weapon enemies like uh, uh, I mean like like Croco is a crocodile and uh, I'll confess and, and... I never knew what the hell Mac was either. I, was like... I think Mac is supposed to be a knife, like Mac the knife. <laughs> Is yeah, my, is yeah. My guess. that's what I got. But for. I mean, but there's so there's a giant bow that launches arrows from himself named Bowyer. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh yeah. And, uh, and yeah, there's a uh, there, there's a uh, a giant spear character later that has the Japanese word for spear Yari in his name. And there's some X characters that I uh, that are probably my favorite boss fight later in the game. But but yeah, the, 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 in general, these are weapon themed enemies with uh, led by someone named Smithy. And you'll be fighting those for most of the game. But also, there's a lot of traditional Mario enemies. I mean, you're jumping on Goombas and and uh, and Koopa Troopas. Basically, right from the first stage, but uh, uh, Peter, this is one. There's there's one difference between this and the Mario and Luigi games that bothered me a little bit. When you jump on enemies, it doesn't deal damage to them. That bothered me as well, and I tried when I when I started the game, I would try to jump on enemies. It's like, nope, that doesn't do anything. Yeah, yeah. it's like the first like, thing oh. I tried to do as well. It's like, oh wait, no damage, no advantage. But I was like, yeah, that came with later Mario RPGs. So they had basically all of them, other than this one, do that. Yeah, I think, I think so. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you just don't do any damage or get... Yeah. yeah. Oh, well. I made the pretense. I made the pretense. It's also interesting that Mario's default attack is a punch. And, like, a, the, the, the jump is a special move. Yeah, well, yeah. I, mean, I mean, Mario's punching in Mario 64, which I think came out around the same time as this game. I'm not 96, are, yeah. Are, are they both 96? It would have been in yeah. development. Right. So, yeah, like, this got ahead of the game with Mario punching. And generally, Mario, like, his suite of attacks is... Maybe the most Mario-like of all in this game, which is appropriate. I mean, because he, uh, you know, he has punches, hammers, jumps, fireballs, and uh, kicks shells around. I'm trying to think of, like, what's the weirdest thing Mario does? Maybe get tossed around by Bowser. But the, <laughs> no, uh, getting kissed by Booster. Oh, that's, oh yeah. <laughs> if you fin- if you finish the mini game fast enough, it's just Mario getting kissed by Peach. And if you finish it slow enough, Peach will avoid uh, Mario and get kissed by Bowser and Booster, which is, you know. A reward in its own. Oh, I, I didn't <laughs> do it that <laughs> That's the true ending there, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. I like I, everybody's I, face at it, too. It's just everyone's kind of, like, up in arms about it. I love the, I love the facial expressions in this game. Like, like the, It's a good physical comedy game, actually. <laughs> the surprised Definitely. Mario face and the crying Bowser face. Yeah. And, uh, and Gino's general lack of expressions. Um, one thing I, like I, his, uh, I like his bow, though. That kind of... Yep, he does. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, one yeah. thing I I hadn't remembered when I went back to this game is when Mario and his friends uh, pantomime events to explain things oh. to people. Yeah. It is hilarious. So good. Or even like seeing like little Mario get tossed from uh from the castle keep like just as a tiny little icon on the world map. <laughs> he <can> get launched. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, surprise <laughs> Mario's really great sprite look, and and like when uh when they're explaining to the uh. Um, to the Chancellor, what happened? You see Mario's Exor, Exor face when he makes the impression of the sword, like you know. Yeah, he does have a specific face for that, right? Yeah, he yeah. He, he does like a weird, um, angry face while he's you know does a uh, does like a spear dive on Bowser. 
It's it, like th- there's a lot of very expressive character work and physical comedy in this game that I like. I I definitely you know experienced before, but didn't totally remember uh, when for this playthrough. Because again, I haven't played this game in I think probably at least a decade, even though I did play it twice back in the day. Um, so uh, Alana, what are your thoughts on the uh, the first zone of the game when you're going through Mushroom Kingdom and you meet Croco and Mac? Uh, <laughs> w- 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 was because again, this is your first time. Were, were were you sort of surprised at some of the tone, or did, did something you particularly liked or noticed? Um, I mean, the first area is just the Mushroom Kingdom, so I figured that things would start off in general. Oh, because it starts off with Mario in his house. Oh, no, as a side note, I always like how this Mario RPGs are always the only Mario games where you get to see Mario's house and, like, he's got a mailbox all the time outside his house. And it's just a really nice mm-hmm. characteristic thing that they've carried on. But, um, it's fun to explore the house, too, usually. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, don't and know whether, I, don't, I don't know whether I think it's cute or I think it's troubling that there's only one bed in there. And it's definitely yeah. the Mario Brothers house. Definitely. Um, one thing I love about this game as well is another side thing. The beds! You can bounce on the beds without <laughs> jumping on them. It's so good! Like Because obviously, being Mario, you have to jump everywhere because you're Mario. And um... yeah, Even though like jumping is a special attack, I do like how everybody knows that like Mario is this prize jumper or something. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and, and yeah. There, there are several, di- yeah, several dialogue points like Mario will have to jump to demonstrate his prowess, and it's always, it's always awesome. <laughs> Also, this game makes me really grateful for its co- combat style. I like that whole, like, why for menu, why to confirm. I think it's a lot of fun. Yeah. I remember when I played Persona 5 for the first time, and you had the different actions governed by the th- four face buttons. I was reminded of this game. And it, it, it yeah. makes... It, it's it's pretty elegantly presented, because you can... Um, uh, like, if, to cancel out of an action, you just press literally any other button other than that... Uh, other than that actions button like like oh no i didn't want to cast a spell i'll just press any button besides why so it does it does occasionally trip me up though just out of muscle memory for other games but yeah exactly because you press like y to use a special and then you press a to use the special like no that goes to attack it's like yeah right right (laughs) it takes some getting used to but i think i think it's at least well presented and it's not um it's not a an overbearing ui which is you know something that is easy to get frustrated that nowadays when UI takes over two thirds of the screen. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, definitely. And the font is like size five. <laughs> oh yeah, but yeah. The first bit of the game, so it starts off Mario as Toad comes to Mario's house, and Mario's like, "Oh no, Peach is I haven't got Peach." And Toad's like, "No, this can't be." And then Toad gets kidnapped by the Hammer Bros or one of the Hammer Bros, and you have to go and save him on the way to the Mushroom Kingdom and. You know, and tell the Chancellor after that that, oh, hang on, um, I haven't got Peach. And then the Chancellor's like, no, go and save her. And he's like, yep, I'll do my best, but there's no bridge. And then he gets embroiled with Mallow, who is the first party member you get. Right. His little medal he's gets frog, kidnapped. Man. I will be honest, like, I just looked at him, I was like, oh, it's a cloud. And he goes, oh, I'm a tadpole. I'm like, <laughs> wait, is there something I've missed in Mario games? Because I'm sure there are frogs in other Mario games. Luckily, I was fine. <laughs> I think that whole sequence is so much better because of the musical cues around it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like and when, yeah, fuchsias, like, yeah, it's so yeah, frog fuchsias just goes they go into the tragic music when yeah, when Mallow is, you know, receives the shocking revelation that he is not a frog. And I, and we haven't <laughs> m- mentioned Mallow prior to the you know, prior to fifteen seconds ago. So I think he's probably the more for, most forgettable of the five party members. But yeah, he's, but he he's a good buddy to have around early, and he's still funny, and he's a he's you know a, a distinct color and silhouette. I I don't dislike Mallow, mm-hmm. but he's no. I do like how they Rousers. divided up the party though, like between the new cast and an old cast, and I mean people mm-hmm. still want to see uh, Gino and in, uh, in Smash Brothers. Yeah, uh-huh. like, okay. compared to like compared to the newer games in this, like in Mario RPGs, Mario Super Mario RPG might have like the most original characters. Out of yeah. any of them. Because well, that yeah. steadily goes down. The, the further you get in, they eventually stop doing OCs pretty much entirely. Well, yeah, exactly. Because this has got Gino, who's a doll, and we'll get to in the next section. And then you've got... Well, Gino's actually a, from uh, somewhere else. Um, yeah, and then you've got Mallow, who's a cloud. Yeah, who's... Gino's real name is pronounced Heart Musical Note Interobang, which is, you know... <laughs> <laughs> but, but then, but then they uh, simplified it down to Gino. Uh, I, I love Mallow and Gino, but well, I'm f- s- focusing on Mallow a little bit. Uh, pretty obvious Chekhov's gun. You will, you will learn more about Mallow in the second half of the game. Mm-hmm. Um, 
but he's he's fun to have around. He has weather powers. He has a healing spell, and uh, but mostly because he's not a great attacker, I I replaced him with Gino or Bowser pretty quickly. Yeah, I yeah. Was going back to physical comedy. I do like the way that when you first meet him and the medal's been stolen, he starts crying, and then it starts raining, and that's where you go. Mm, you said you were a frog, though, and then it's just kind of thing. But I like the way they utilize that at least. It is a shame because Mallow does have a little bit of time, like right up until you get to um tadpole or frog kingdom whatever it's called tadpole pond and he does have a kind of time to shine but as soon as gino and bowser starts popping up he kind of just gets overshadowed because gino is like your stoic rpg hero who's like it's my destiny to save the seven stars and rebuild the star bridge and then bowser's just funny but i don't, I don't, I think, like... G- I don't think gino's over serious but he's uh he's a little yeah. bit he's a little bit more stoic than the other characters right Maybe straight is a better word for it, but yeah. Um, but Croco, I thought was Yoshi at first with teeth. I was like, <laughs> isn't that what it's supposed to be? Basically, or yeah, it's exactly. Basically the thing? Yeah, the sprite thing. Yeah. Um, and I thought because I was going to save Peach, I thought, oh, we're going to go off with Mallow and go back to Bowser's kingdom and maybe figure something out. But then, no, nope, this whole escapade of going to get this medal—it's a nice way of introducing everything because you know that it's going to be fast and you know it's going to be fun breezy and everything and it kind of teaches you everything you need to know without even though you get tutorials without being told necessarily but it's a nice way to ease you in and i think it starts you off comfortably and then you start going to places like that people aren't familiar with like you don't go to donut plains or choco mountain or anything like that yeah um pretty much it's only (laughs) mushroom kingdom is the uh is the setting that is you know comfortably within the mario universe and uh peter i think you and i and um john tucker also talked about the various um weird settings that mario visits in uh in the different mario games because every mario rpg basically is a new setting with you know crazy interpretations of normal mario thing right yeah pretty much um this is pretty much I th- i'm pretty sure this is the only mario game with you know a village of happy mining mole people yeah <laughs> yeah i think so um <laughs> it's something they leaned off of later on again like same with the original characters but like Mario RPG, like for their, it's not even like they don't even have the the excuse of like, oh, it's a different kingdom, like Bean Bean Kingdom or something. Nope, it is just straight up. This is the Mushroom Kingdom, and now there's a town of sentient mole people and a talking wedding cake, and mm-hmm. deal with it. <laughs> right. So, um, Mario gets the first star at the end of Mushroom Kingdom when uh, it's taken out over by bouncy springy dudes led by a possible knife possible spring <laughs> named mac and he doesn't really any and he you know dramatically grabs this spinning star that floats out of the air but doesn't really know why it's why what it's for at least yet but in the uh in the second zone when you're uh saving the residents of rose town from an evil bow named bowyer uh gino joins the team and explains exactly what's going on um and okay guys tell me you didn't turn into a seven-year-old child again when you saw uh when you saw the kid in the Rose Town Hotel playing with action figures, oh, that was sweet. Yeah, <laughs> it reminded me of this, this, the end scene from Last Jedi. Actually, <laughs> it was, was quite cool. Yeah, from like I've obviously seen Gino before playing Super Mario RPG. So when I saw the doll, I thought, "Why has Gino got a doll?" And I like the way that the kid is like he looks at Mario as he comes into the house, and he's playing with his Mario doll, and he spots him, and he's like, "Oh my god." And then he's like, no, Mario, you need to play as... Does he play as Bowser, or does he... Yeah, he plays think, as yeah, Bowser. Yeah, he plays as Bowser, and, uh, and the kid the plays kid as Gino. Gino. And yeah. um, I, I wonder how many Mario dolls are around this world, because Booster also has a Mario doll. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> maybe just Mario is a well-known enough figure to have his own action figure line in this universe. But when Mario is knocked out from, uh, from playing with the action figures with the kid and, go, and, uh, and takes a nap... Uh, I, th- I think there's some fun low-key shade thrown around when um, the four dolls are put away and a star comes down from the sky and, and you know hovers over each of the dolls and decides that the Gino one looks the strongest. It's yeah, like, it's, it's, that's a little bit rude to Bowser and Mario and maybe Princess as well. He says to him, doesn't he? He says, oh, I picked this doll because I thought it was the strongest one. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> but yeah, it was cool seeing that because I didn't realize the Gino was a doll. I mean, I assumed, but I just thought maybe he was a sentient doll, not like magical star person and if you look at like the art of gino and and not just his sprite he you can tell he's supposed to be some kind of a wooden doll he almost has a bit of like a pinocchio wooden jointed look to him 
And uh, maybe for how cool the character is, it's a weird design. <laughs> it, I, I remember when I played this for the first time in the in the '90s. I thought that the red um, the red things coming off of his hat were his nose, and he had a giant red nose, and his <laughs> eyes were turned up. But that's not the case at all. He just has some, he just has some red things poking out of his hat. Again, I was maybe twelve. It happens. But yeah, Gino's awesome. I uh, I really like his, his like his his uh his look and style is you know he fires uh he fires his fists and things out of his gun and uh, and even turns into a cannon for one spell. He he's a really fun design and he's pretty powerful. He's his I think his attack power is higher than Mario's, but his weapons don't raise his attack as much. So he's I'm the only one capable of a nine 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 attack. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. Mm-hmm. If you time Gino World perfectly, but, I, I have never done it actually. I did it once, and it was uh, it was against. Um, oh, uh, we haven't gotten there yet. But there's an area where there's a uh, where you fight some um, some shark minions, and against one of the shark minions, I I was able to pull it off. But I, I but I think there's only a couple places in the game it'll work, and one of them is one of them is one late boss battle. But uh, I, we won't get into that. Um, yeah, Gino's a really cool design. Um, when you, before you meet him, you have to um, go through the the woods outside of Rose Town and follow him through the woods to locate the um, the bow monster Bowyer. And I love the mu- the woods music. That is maybe my favorite track in the whole game. It's famous. It's, it's really it's famous. Basically, yeah, it's basically famous for it. I think it's perfect bopping music, isn't it? Like, you, there's no other piece of music I've heard that I just like bop along to like that. I mean, it's perfect jumping music. I think I mean, that piece was. I think that piece was actually remixed on either Dramatica or Memoria. Yeah, yeah, definitely. yeah. It's a wonderful effect. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. My, sec- um, my, my second favorite piece is probably the uh, uh, um, the the main. The, there's two boss themes. And I like the second one for star for star enemies for star uh, piece the bosses. Sticky bosses. Yeah, I have exactly. very few bad things to say about that entire soundtrack. It's, it's, it's a good soundtrack. I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, Shimamura is great, and this is a really good entry into her catalog. There's a lot of good stuff here. It's mm-hmm. very. It's very. There's so much, many different mm-hmm. styles going on. That's crazy. And each town has their own theme. That's uh, that is basically a, a fun bop i guess um, yeah uh, the, the, there's there's seven towns in the game basically basically corresponding to the seven stars maybe not 100 mm-hmm. percent, but they, they all have a really cute vibe around them and feel unique which is you know not always the case for rpg towns it's basically a perfect resume for her work in kingdom hearts yeah it's gotta get that tone like, going like, for it fluffy cartoony feel to it yeah, I like I like um I like when you do the minecart level and that music kicked in. I'm like, this was in Mario Kart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought that as well. That's, great. that's that's actually that's actually hilarious. <laughs> yeah, I don't feel it. Never feels like a ripoff, but they do you know appropriate music from other Mario games um, quite often. And also, I, I I don't know if these if the sound effects were made for this game or if they take some from Mario World because you have the Mario jumping sounds and the coin sounds. And and like every you hear the do 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 every time you um every time you land a late super jump, uh, oh, like yeah. if, if you get a, a combo of super jumps that's five or more, you get the, uh, you, you know you you get Mario very Mario sounding sounds for all yeah. the sound effects. Do you guys did you guys had notice anything about the sound effects? Because I think the sound design in this game is great in general. Nothing uh, in particular other than you've said, but no, I like no, a lot that. of the clicking. I like a lot of the clicking noises, like when you're playing that stupid game. There's so many mini games in this game. First off, yeah. there's a lot. Of, yes, there <laughs> and collecting frog coins is wonderfully infuriating. Yeah, oh, um, yeah, and the frog coins have a have a deeper like coin jingle than the regular coins when you grab one. I don't know yeah. why. I like a lot of the clicking sound effects in the menu. I... There's something really satisfactory, isn't there, about a really good click in a menu, and yeah. like immediately when you go into the menus, it just made me smile. It was just it felt familiar, and most of the sound effects are really familiar. Like you were saying about the super jump and timing those perfectly. That's the noise that you get in Super Mario World, isn't it? When you do like the mini game where you get like you have to hit the block and you have to stop, see whether you get a star and then a flower, and there's, when they all line up in like there's eight boxes surrounding one central box and they all have to match like noughts and crosses and stuff. Yeah. Or, it's... Yeah. It's that noise. So when you hit those boxes, um, and it goes, and I'm just like, Oh, it's great. It's so good. And, but... and also, I mean, uh, Steph was mentioning that there's game has a lot of mini games and we've mentioned this on other podcasts before, but, uh, a lot of the, every attack and every spell in this game is basically its own mini game to get, you know, your timed button presses to get that critical hit. And a lot of the sound design taps into that. Like, it, most of the time, the timed hit involves hitting the A or Y button at the appropriate 
like, at the appropriate sound effect or point in the attack. Like you get that really satisfying shell kick sound right when the uh, <laughs> it, and you press A right when the knock knock shell hits Mario's foot. Or uh, in all of Mario's jump attacks, you gotta press Y right when he's hitting the enemy to get that, you know, to get the um, the critical hit on the jump. And my personal favorite might be the the really brilliant like sound every time one of Bowser's claw at- claw attacks hits. Oh yeah, yeah. I love it's, that. It's, it's, just, it's, it's a juicy claw effect, and I, I mean, I just I, I always try to listen to sound design in games, and and, uh, and Square was really really good at a lot of them for their old RPGs. I mean, I'm, especially Super Mario RPG and Chrono Trigger, I guess. But oh, yeah, yeah. There's just really, really good sound design that ties into the mini games and the combat that I really love about Mario RPG. They even work in they work in the Final Fantasy Victory theme at one point. It's adorable. They do. There's a, there's a um a, a very explicit Final Fantasy sound reference in the second half of the game that we will talk about uh, in the second episode. But um, I guess uh, staying to the story a little bit. Um, we brought up Moleville. That's a uh, right. Right after Bowyer and the Green Star, uh, those are cute moles. They're they're nice, friendly mole people. Are they Monty moles though? Oh, like, maybe I don't I don't know because like, they... because like their upper torso sort of looks like it, but I mean Monty moles don't wear clothes. No, exactly. I was really disappointed. I was expecting to come into a village of Monty moles, and then <laughs> when I didn't, I was like, no, I don't want to be was, here anymore. I, I was going to say, is this where Mister Rossetti is from? Oh, maybe. <laughs> well, they're too happy. Maybe, maybe that's why he doesn't live there anymore. He was cast out. Yeah, they're a little maybe. bit more fully featured than Diglets, so I'm pretty sure this is not a Pokemon crossover. This is before Pokemon as well, or just uh, after, true. actually. Um, about the same time. But... Uh, uh, same time as the Japanese version before it uh, it came worldwide. But yeah, uh, Moleville, you go into a mine to rescue um some mole kids that were locked in there, and also find a star and a clown named Punchinello. <laughs> and it's also the second Croco appearance. Croco um, does show up periodically in the game. Uh, you know, the first time I played this, um, minor spoiler: uh, Croco um, is is a vendor at the very, very end of the game. He sells you a few things. And one oh. of my one of my friends that had already beaten the game told told yeah, me, "Oh, Cro- oh, Croco becomes a good guy." So I thought I interpreted that as Croco joins your party eventually. Oh, and um and so, so I, yeah so i i ran into croc i keep running into croc I was like man you asshole come on join me like you're supposed to be a, a bad guy turned into a good guy like bowser right and it never happened so uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah i know he's just <laughs> he's he becomes useful that doesn't make him a good guy right. he's kind of a reverse he's kind of like popple the shadow thief i think they recycled that idea again in superstar saga you see croco a couple times and uh the mole the mining area is the second croco boss fight but uh how weird is punchinello the clown i'm still not sure if he's in the smithy gang or if he's just a weirdo clown that likes explosions I don't Who knows? think he is. I don't think he is from reading the wiki beforehand. I think all of the Smithy gown are at least mostly metallic or mostly made out of... Well, it can be smithed, basically, but Punchinello is just fists, not, like, specifically a weapon or anything we get, like that. We, we, we gotta go deep in the lore here. Mm. Yeah, I know. We have mm. really. Um, Punchinello also... is a good boss, though. I quite like Punchinello as a boss. It yeah, was like... Kind of weird. And when you fight Mac and Bowyer, uh, after you defeat them, one of their minions goes, oh no, I better tell the rest of the Smithy gang, and it's, they sneak out of there. It's a, it, one of the springy guys and one of the arrows. But there's nothing like that for Pensionello. I think he's just a clown that likes bombs and is a bit of an attention seeker. Yeah, uh, I, think I, so. I don't think he's forged by the Smithy gang necessarily. Yeah, but I do like the way that um, it's just, the boss fight is just waves of him throwing little bombs, and obviously this is where Mallow comes into use, because you can just use Thunderstorm and plow your way through it pretty much but um i do like the satisfaction of the bombs gradually getting bigger as he gets more annoyed at you and eventually being kind of like taking his own medicine and being squashed by a giant bob bomb which is pretty good and then it blows up <laughs> i like the way that none of the characters shook off all this either which is a normally a rpg thing that they do yeah the, the, there's fun escalation to that boss fight and it ends in a bit of a comedy moment which is you know which is nice i like i think a lot of the boss fights in this game are really well designed and they're, they're also the only time where you'll ever feel ch- feel challenged uh, a couple of the boss fights get tricky here and, and there's a couple boss fights i definitely want to talk about in the second half of the game um but for now uh i, I think Mul- moleville is a bit of a brief stop in this game um it's it, it doesn't it doesn't uh, Mario RPG doesn't always follow the dungeon town, dungeon town pattern exactly. 
and uh, because Mo Moleville, I mean, you can do the entire Moleville thing in about 45 minutes, maybe. Did anyone else find the minecart game really irritating? Like, I think it went on just... too long. Yeah, it's too long, and then it's really fiddly, because if you speed up, then it's you have to hold down, like, the D-pad to turn, so it's... There's a lot of minigames, I'm not sure all of them are winners, though. No, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> The, thing the, uh, the one where you're jumping barrels was really obnoxious because you don't really know what, which side the coins are going to be on. I don't mind that one too much because at least, I, well, I mean, none of them have got like an end goal, but I quite like that one because yeah. at least you could get flowers. Uh, They're this nice one. pastimes. Like, it's a good way to kind of divide up the gameplay from the usual. So even if I don't like the minigames all that much, I do think they're a fun and dumb break. <laughs> yeah, There's exactly. usually they come yeah. with prizes. There's one minigame in the second half of the game that yields one of the best accessories if you finish it in, I think, un it's either under 12 seconds or under 15 seconds. And I, that? It's one where you, you got to um, uh, go up a cliff. Oh, right, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, it, it, it's... Um, I know I'm already going to lose an hour to try and get that accessory because it's it's really good. It uh it increases your attack and special attack by fifty percent and gives you a small speed boost. <sighs> yeah, the, the mini games in this game are a bit of a mixed bag. They're not always fun or welcome, but they at least they consistently keep introducing new ones. Um, I I actually really liked the one in Booster's Tower where you uh the the snivets are opening the curtains. <laughs> I love yeah. that. And I love that whole sequence. Mm -hmm. If you don't do it in time, you have to fight a boss fight against Booster and the three and the three Sniffits, and uh, I don't think and I, th I think you get the item that he normally gives you as a prize in that boss fight instead. Oh, that Booster okay. music is Thank so you. good too. I love how it goes between like casual hotel lobby to Booster's stupid theme. Oh yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I love the dumb Booster theme. But we should just talk about Booster's tower in general. We, we because... did we did we did Booster's theme on an old uh, on an old rhythm episode, I think oh, actually. We did? Yeah, yeah, with Kate. Right. Yeah, Kate was one of Caitlin's picks. All right. Oh, we got to pour one out for Rhythm for Encounter, everybody. All right. <laughs> Moment of silence. Moments uh, pass. Okay. <laughs> cool. But yeah, Booster's a weirdo, and you need Bowser's help to get into Booster Tower, where you and you, uh, and this is, you know. There's nothing quite like a frenemy chapter, you know, where your greatest enemy becomes the next hero. So <laughs> I, I got, love I, finally having Bowser on your team. And I love that Bowser is, uh,. <laughs> Sort of um, anxiety ridden, ridden and goofy. Yeah, like he's so in, he's so insecure about the presence of a new villain, and he's like <laughs> freaking out that this guy's muscling in on his territory. And then he's like reminiscing about the good old days when he and Mario would like go. He would kidnap Peach, and Mario would come save her. And and he's like, it, it's it's kind of great, actually. <laughs> Bowser is a really fun character in this game he, and again uh, his his moves are kind of brutal because like he'll like summon like stalagmites and he'll just straight up like toss mario at people and his and like the, his claws have brutal sound effects but uh i also like he's sort of sensitive and cares about his uh his koopa troop people because there's points later in the game where he'll meet former members of his troop and he'll and they're all, and they're all like boss it's you i'm glad you're all right boss and, and uh <laughs> did you guys get the chomp in booster's tower yeah i did mm -hmm. Is this sort of funny? It's like it's like, it's like he treats it almost like a dog that's being that's a little that's that's you know chained up and and kind of angry and then he, but then he gets it to calm down. But Mario has to turn away because the chap is sensitive. <laughs> I love that. It's so cute. <laughs> that is a cute bit, yeah. Bowser's just, probably my favorite character to use in this game. It's like it's like Bowser and Gino are are by far my two favorites. But uh, like I think Bowser has good characterization in general. In general, Bowser's characterization in the spinoff games is always really kind of fun to see. Like they 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 play around with that a lot. Yeah, yeah. he's a bit of a straight up normal villain in the first Paper Mario, but it's but it's still an over the top funny good version of villain Bowser. Uh, but in it all the fun to have Peach's segments in that to kind of play off of it. Oh yeah, so. I, I love yeah. Peach segments in both Paper Mario and Thousand Year Door. They're like, oh yeah. my god, I can't believe they made me feel so strongly about a computer AI in this in <laughs> Thousand Year Door. That's so confusing, isn't it? That <laughs> whole Thousand Year Door goes places definitely. It really does. Like a, a lot of them are. Like we mentioned this again in our episode from last year, but Mario are, is is secretly one of the best RPG series because they're like they're all you know they're all in the eight, nine, ten quality range and uh, i mean is, has there ever been a real dud i, I haven't played the last couple mario and the luigi's yeah i mean, the paper mario series is a bit more downhill now so i'd, I think I'd, I'd say yeah sticker star and okay. color splash yeah, I, haven't, Plus, I, haven't, yeah. I haven't played those but but i think even generally the mario and luigi games have generally been considered the peak was one and three and they're the only two that have been remade well uh, three bowser's inside stories being remade for 3ds for next year and most people consider the rest okay maybe That's i know the fair. second yeah i but mean they're the, the, the only but it's still remarkable that a basically a spin-off series 
has been um, just so consistently good uh, over the past 20 years or so. And I mean, I mean, I I love the first two Paper Mario's and Mario RPG and and most of the Mario and Luigi games. But uh, so I guess I'm biased. But uh, we we did a whole episode about them. If uh, listeners, if you want to listen to a discussion, it's I don't remember the episode number, but I think it's called Mario and RPGs, is the episode mm. title. But uh, back to Booster's Tower. How about that weirdo Booster? Uh, what is wrong with his facial hair? <laughs> What's yeah, wrong with his facial love... expressions? He just—he only has like open grin and giant open mouth. He's like, he's like a character from a completely different series, like some kind of like like a Viking or something. Like just kind of pops in the Mario universe, and he's just this big hairy douchebag who was like going to force Peach to marry him. No, do not yeah. inter- do not interpret this as me as me, you know, defending Booster. But I, I don't think he understands what marriage is. I don't no, think he understands anything. No. <laughs> Yeah, that's about right. <laughs> he's just he's just a weirdo who likes toys but does not really know how to interact with others. He is uh, I don't know, he has a uh, booster has some issues, I guess. But uh he's he's definitely not one of Mario's friends. He should know better. He should know that kidnapping is wrong. <laughs> uh, I like uh, my favorite part matters to anybody in the Mario verse. <laughs> they all when seem he's, pretty when he's... Remember when he tastes he tastes Peach's tears and is like salty. Oh, that was <laughs> so strange. Yeah. Like, dude, that's not cool. It's something you interpret differently as an adult, isn't it? Yeah, yeah it really yeah. is. I, I did enjoy his uh, strategy for eating that giant cake, though. Oh yeah, that yeah. was a great fight. Actually, I love. Wait, that did, one. I love how everyone's like, "Wait, did the cake move? It's kind of gross." <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> and it, even Booster says that. Wait, guys, I think the cake just moved. They're like, no, 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 don't pay attention to that, Booster. You can do this. <laughs> at, least, at least his Snippet buddies are encouraging, which is, you know, better than yeah. it could be. Even if they are, like, terrible wingmen. <laughs> Dreadful. I mean, they do manage to punt a cake into his mouth, so... This is that. Okay, so they have, they have something going for them, I suppose. <laughs> exactly. But after the uh, after you thwart the marriage between Booster and and the princess, and possibly get you know kisses will happen between various characters depending on how quickly you found the items in that little mini game. After that, Peach joins the party. I, I, she's mostly called Princess in this game, and they again they hadn't really started calling her Peach yet. But we're all probably going to call her Peach because we've been calling her Peach for twenty two years, <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> so it's probably already supported that. It's already happened in this episode a couple times, I think. By at, at, at least I've done it, but. When she she joins the party, um, and it's I think this is the first time that both Bowser or Peach uh, sort of is controllable by the player, and they're both really good. Yeah, I yeah. kind of love I kind of love their banter, like like when Peach like like the, when she's like just just let him keep talking to Bowser about Bowser, <laughs> and how she's she's sort of a princess who's used to being rescued all the time, and definitely likes and appreciates Mario, but she's she's done being rescued. She's like, okay, I'm just gonna I'm gonna float down here with my parasol, and now I'm gonna help with some of the rescuing. That was great. I was like, yeah, go girl. I mean, sometimes I'm I'm annoyed if any character, whether it's male or female, is just an object to be rescued. It's like, like I mean, the, there's the word, the phrase "damsel in distress," of course, but uh, they sort of make her like own it by just using frying pans to kick some ass. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, she's beating people with giant slap gloves and fire frying pans and parasols. Yeah, and her final her final spell is I think she like gets a bomb out of her purse or something. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, she does a whole bunch of bombs. Yeah, so she, it's she's kind your, of yeah, she's your best healing subversive. character, and and yeah. uh, and um and I don't think is I, I this is one of my favorite portrayals of her. I, th- I think that it's it's more empowering and fun than like the entirety of the Super Princess Peach DS game. Oh, that was so bad. That game's not very good. It's, it's <laughs> no, but the, but this no. is a great this is a great version of Princess Peach. I guess it's uh, I, I guess it's Smash Brothers Melee is the first one that she's in. I wanted mm-hmm. more Mario RPG stuff in that in the, this version of her. I wanted the uh, I wanted the slap glove and the psych bombs, but we didn't we didn't get them unfortunately. No, that's a shame. So uh, right after Mary Moore, when Peach joins, that's all five playable characters in the game, and it's a, a pretty forgiving um, character system. You have two healers and magic users, two sort of different kinds of attackers, and then Mario. Who has his stats near the middle of the pack, but has the has the best equipment for boosting those stats? Um, uh, I, I, we've gone over all of them a little bit, but I'm, I want to go around the table a little bit. Uh, who is our favorite, and briefly why? Uh, starting with you, Peter. Do you have a favorite character so far? 
Oh, yeah, Bowser. Okay. Boozer. <laughs> Bowser's my boy. He always has been. Um, he's I, Even in Smash, like he's not like the best character in that game, but I usually play as him anyway because dive bombing off the side of the stage is fun. <laughs> um, I know people like you. Mm-hmm. I, yeah, Don- yeah, Donkey yes. Kong and Bowser players and, or even oh. Kirby players that do that. Yeah, come on. That, that, that's... Don- that, Donkey Kong is the down B to win character. Uh, Alana, do you have a favorite character in the game so far? Uh, I think it's a tie between Bowser and Gino. I want to know more about Gino. Bowser is definitely uh, hitting all my expectations perfectly because I expected him to be this essentially a dork who's like, I'm so insecure, I don't know what to do, I know I want my castle back, I want all this, but Mario, please, I want it to be back to normal again. But Gino has got something that's very, very kind of simple Square Enix in him, but also, like, he's got that cutesy charm of being, like, Pinocchio. And It's, it's like a, it's like 60, 60% Nintendo, 40% Square in that thing. And definitely. It works, he's cool. <laughs> yeah, so I can't wait to see where he goes, definitely, so I think they're gonna they're going to carry the rest of the game for me. Not that the game needs carrying, but right. they definitely wear my... Yeah. So, uh, um, Steph, do you have a favorite character in the game? Like of of the five playable ones? Oh, uh, I was going to say Boshi. <laughs> oh, pff. Boshi. Yeah. I don't know why it's Boshi. It's bad Yoshi. And his, his Japanese name is Washi. To you know, fit fit with the Wario war, uh, Waluigi Waluigi. thing because the because the the word for Japanese and bad is I think Wadui. Just ju- yeah. justice justice for Boshi. Bring him back. Boshi <laughs> is like the progenitor for the Yoshi in Paper Mario: The Thousand Year Door, who's in the yeah. wrestling section, isn't he? Oh, I think you're right. So little of Mario RPG is kind of like referenced back in the in the other series. Is God, I love the baby Yoshi in Mar- in Thousand Year oh, Door. He's, he's an my underrated favorite. kid. Yeah, he's my favorite character. I always use him in his little orange shorts. <laughs> So and when you when you boost his attack, he deals so much damage with his multi hit stuff. Yeah, really. He's great. <laughs> in Thousand Year Doors, it's it's either him or the or uh, um or the Vivian sh- Vivian the Shadow Witch. Is, yeah, is she's great. The, the, those are the, those are the cool ones in that game. Back to Mario RPG. Um, uh, so <laughs> is that what we're going with? Bo- Boshi, <laughs> Steph. Yeah, I'm going with Boshi. <laughs> All right, Boshi's cool. <laughs> I actually like the entire cast, and I always get like really torn between like picking the newbies and picking the the kind of you know OG squad. Well, that's the thing, isn't it? Like you, we've already talked about physical comedy. There's not like tons of dialogue in this game. You no. don't need to build up the. You don't need to build up Bowser and Mario and Peach, and even the like drips that you get for Gino and Mallow. I don't have enough for Mallow yet, but they feel like enough. My favorite, thing, really my like, favorite uh... thing about my favorite thing about Mallow is that his armor is pants. Yeah, <laughs> I like the pants, like, um, cape, shell dress. It's yeah. so nice and simple. Uh, I, and like, I like some of the old CG pictures that they had of this stuff too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, like, they had a flaming shell for Bowser. It actually, looked pretty pretty badass. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the, um, um, uh, yeah. Uh, I, I think one of his armor pieces laid in the game is the flame shell. And uh, but in some of the art, in, in an art book or maybe uh, some manual art for this game, they show like more stylized versions of some weapons and armor that your characters equip. And the flame shell looks awesome. And and like I have to say, it's also really fun to track Bowser as a as he was expelled from his kingdom and taking his like weird little cavalry throughout the land. Oh yeah, and like he... they usually run into misadventures in the meanwhile, and I just thought that was a whole fun chapter too. It's cool to see how like the entire story kind of builds up. Yeah, there, there's foreshadowing and a build through the whole story, and it's it's just a well designed RPG, and it's done by um, Square when they were at or near the top of their game, and. Uh, and... I mean, I think I mentioned this earlier before. Back to the characters thing. I love this version of Bowser, and I and Gino is probably my favorite new character. But I think this is a really good version of Mario because he's he's a silent protagonist with all of the strengths and weaknesses of that. But he has like, you know, he's a classic design. He has sort of a smiling expression. He's likable, and his his attacks and and spells in the game are both fit into what Mario has always done in Mario games, but are really f- just fun interpretations of those. And I and one thing that I think this game does great for all five of its characters is that the, we've been mentioning it throughout the whole episode, but their spells and and um, weapons and attacks sort of help their personality a little bit. Mm-hmm. And and uh, and even you know there isn't a there isn't a ton of expository dialogue. You're like this is not a game where you're going to be reading for reading for ages or watching cutscenes, uh, long cutscenes. But I, I think all five characters have their personality presented really well both in action and in dialogue and that's one thing that i definitely did not think about when i was playing this game at age 11 or 12 but I'm it's noticing... really good design and <laughs> right? definitely square enix has you know has their thumb totally all over that oh yeah yeah well, i mean this is like 
the first Mario game where Mario's really got character outside of, like, obviously the terrible, like, typing games and teaching games and things like that that came out around the same time gave him a voice on that. But this is the first time that we're not just Mario jumping around and running and trying to get Kiss off a of Peach. I mean, he does all that, but he does, like, you've described the pantomime scenes and, like, where the kids all go, oh my god, it's Mario! Are you the real Mario? And then you have to jump, and then it's still so real. And it's like it's the first mm-hmm. time that you really get the sense of what Mario is about to become. And it's kind of played... cool to see the Mario perspective through a different developer, I guess. And it really turned mm-hmm. out really good. It was yeah. the best parts of what Marius knows about making RPGs, and it has got that Mario flair like beautifully all over it. Yeah, uh, the, the Mario. I, I mean, Mario has a heroic personality, and is I would I would say is sort of a a positive person. But uh, it's like it's cool that they made him that they, he has more of a personality in this game than in any Mario game previous that I, at least that I can think of. Hmm. Yeah, it's not quite as good though, Peter, as having a dedicated stash stat. That, that, that's the one thing. <sighs> yeah, that's this game. that's what that is one thing that's missing from Mario this, RPGs. This we need more mustache little, love. Yes, yeah, so a little bit more mustache um, attention. Whether it was I don't I, I don't know maybe he needs a like a mustache comb accessory that just improves all of his stats. Or something. I don't know. We also I mean, need more Luigi. More Luigi is yeah. missing. Uh, um, <laughs> Luigi is missing. <laughs> is, <laughs> Take that, Mario. <laughs> that, that that'd be the sequel to Mario is missing. That no that one nobody asked. asked. <laughs> oh but, yeah. Um, but Luigi does make an appearance in this game, but it's so brief that uh, it's gonna you're gonna be you're gonna feel offended by it. <laughs> yeah. Um, and uh, later in the game, oh shoot, I don't want to go into this too deeply, but. Mario becomes the most overpowered character by far. If Mario? You, uh, yeah, th- there's a special accessory and a special armor that only he can equip. But to do them, you have to get 30 jumps in a row on a super jump or ultra jump attack. Oh no, mm. I'm so close! And, and the, uh, th- there's a character that will, that, uh, that will keep count of your, highest, of your highest number of jumps that you've done and then reward you with those two items. But it's 30 for the accessory and 100 for the armor. So, oh good luck. god, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to go for the accessory. I'm definitely on 25. Oh, so nice. I'm going to go for the accessory. I'm probably not going to go for the armor. <laughs> Right, so uh, um, I, I have not got I like I I mentioned that I, I'm going to try and get the good accessory from that cliff mini game later later on, but I I can't do the super jumps. I I think my all time record is about twenty. Square Square Enix over here, like you want you, oh you want a hundred percent complete our game. Good luck. And uh, also, this this is for Alana and Peter. Um, there's two. There are uh, two things I want you guys to experience that are sort of hidden. Um, later in the game, if you find an item called a seed and an item called fertilizer, oh, go back yeah. to uh, go back to Rose Town, and then you can uh, um, you can exchange those for some really good items. And also later in the game, when you're around the star, like around star number six range, go to Moleville, uh, buy some dynamite from one of the moles selling dynamite, <laughs> then trade it for a shiny stone that another person wants dynamite for, and then go to the second to last town and use that to open a door. But don't don't try to fight the boss behind that door. Until you're around the six star range, I think I know what you're talking oh, about. You got it. Yeah, it's but... pretty famous. It's, it's pretty it's pr- okay. All right, I figured. I figured that, but I want to talk about those things in the second episode. So I'm I'm telling you officially here about those things without mm-hmm. you having to resort to an FAQ. All right, <laughs> I'm aware. Cool. Right. Very cool. Very cool. So, um, well, the one last thing we want to talk about before we close up shop, and that is Star Hill, the five minute dungeon without a boss that you get a star piece at anyway. Hooray! Yeah. Hooray. What a what a I don't want to say let down, but like, right. I mean, it's visually lovely. It sounds gorgeous. And I oh, really love the design of it. I love the little, so there's little stars dotted around and they've got smiley mm-hmm. faces. And so they've all got wishes. My favorite one, <laughs> I don't know if this is the Luigi reference you're after, but where you click it's on not, one of them. It's, it's not, but, no. but I, know the, I know the one you're talking about. Yeah, so it's like, I want to be as strong as Mario or my big brother or something like that, <laughs> um, which is great. But like, there's a couple for Mallow, and there's one with one of the stars is Mallow's parents because they say, we we just want to see our son again and then Mal is like he nearly cries again it's like i think that's quite dangerous in star hill so i'm glad he didn't <laughs> like i'm not sure if that's like on in the world or like half in the sky it looks like it's in the world but kind of otherworldly i guess but yeah it's like i was expecting another boss because 
the, for the star piece to just be sitting there ready for you, it was like, oh, okay. I mean, yeah, like, I, I love the concept of Star Hill, and it ties into the thing, like, this is where the wishes of people go, and then uh, the Star Road turns them into shooting stars, and then people's wishes come true. And we need to repair the Star World Road with star pieces so that people's wishes can come true again. The You know, there's the Saturday morning cartoon um, overarching plot of this game. Uh, mm. But, and Star Hill's cute, and the music's good, and it has this sort of alien feel to it, almost like you're on the surface of the moon or something. That's all really good, but the whole thing is five or ten minutes, and there's no boss at the end. So it's like, really? This is just a shrug of a gen- dungeon. I appreciate the dinosaur bone monster, and also the the otters, or like the mole-type things there as well. Like, there's some diverse creatures. I, I thought like... of them as like burrowing <laughs> ferrets or stoats or something. Yeah, that's the word I'm thinking of. It's completely different, Alana. <laughs> well, no, no, they're, they're related. They're all must- Those are all mustelids, I think. Cool. But, okay, I think we've basically covered the first half of the game. In the second half, we'll talk about Seaside Town and Volcano and uh, and Bowser's Castle Ooh. and all those good things. Like Grumble Volcano? Uh, no, it's, it's, I don't think it's a previously encountered volcano. But um, th- my favorite boss fight in the entire game is at the top of that volcano. So please, Ooh, look, nice. please look forward to that. Oh, <laughs> right. You know what it is. Uh, <laughs> it, 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 you might have heard of this too, Peter, but it's a, it's a an excellent boss fight uh, that where you get the sixth star of the game. So, I think we're about done talking about Super Mario RPG. It's I, I It has been such a... Not really a revelation, because I've always liked this game, but it has been so fun rediscovering the best parts of this game with, you know, the context of being in my early 30s and not a preteen. And, um... It, it, I, I think right after we're done talking, I might go back to my SNES Classic and continue, because I've I've just had such a blast. But... Thank you so much for joining me on this podcast, guys. I'm looking forward to getting back with uh, with you to talk about the second half of the game in about two weeks. But um, speaking of the future of Retro Encounter, next week we're having a sequel to our um, 2016 Confessions episode. Alana, you were on that episode with me, where we yeah, I was. yeah, where we uh, we you know confess to our RPG shames, and I have two other. RPGs fan staff members that have never been to a confession before, so I'm going to get real weird and Catholic on that episode. Mm. That's, that's next week. Particular. <laughs> and, and Crazy. <laughs> Tell me your oh, sins, oh my. <laughs> Well, uh, and uh, Peter, you're going to be hosting another episode later this month. Uh, that's another sequel to a 2017 episode that we did. Is that right? Yeah, we're going to be doing Darksiders 2. Um, uh, we're, we're reuniting. We're bringing the band back together. We're getting Keegan and Marcos, and we're going to we're going to talk shop about Death's Adventure to redeem mm. his brother War. So it'll be fun. Please Bringing look forward to together. it. We're on a yeah. mission from Gad. So yeah, we have a confessional episode and a Darksiders 2 episode in our future. We haven't totally decided all of our plans for June yet, but hopefully next week I'll know a little bit more. I'm not sure yet. Uh, but listeners, if you want to reach us directly, the best way to do so is to email retro at rpgfan.com. Also, visit rpgfan.com proper, and you'll see links to the RPG Fan message boards, our Facebook page, our Instagram page, with Steph, which uh, Steph has been very active on recently, our Discord, which uh, a lot of people have been active on recently. The Discord's more popping than our forums are nowadays. And RPG Fan's Twitch page, where we have... Uh, people streaming uh, games at least five nights a week. I'm not sure. You, um, if you want to see what the Twitch schedule looks like, go to that page on RPGFan.com because we're recording this early enough in advance that if I were to check it now, it would probably be outdated for you, the listener. And um, please review us on iTunes. To iTunes. Wow. Okay. Is, is, is that an Apple thing that I wasn't aware of? <laughs> this new Super Mario RPG Town. Mm, I t- yeah, so yeah. Just, just, just give it time. Sure. <laughs> Yeah, I, I think I towns are probably. I, be I'm in pretty our sure there's a. They're pretty sure there's a Black Mirror episode about that. Yeah, <laughs> is I, that not like you're not talking about Balam Garden? Is that what we're going to end up with? And just Apple is going to be running Balam Garden? It's going to be like, I towns and Google Cities, and all of it is going to be run by Amazon infrastructure. That's it. That's cool. right. Those are the. Oh, goody. Yeah. On safe, secure servers operated by Sony. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. And all of our social interaction is determined by Facebook, the safest company of them all. But, hey, thanks, President Zuckerberg. <laughs> oh, but listeners, uh, review us on iTunes, Google Play, or however you're listening to us. If you can review us or rate us, please do so. Um, we prefer five stars, but we'll take whatever we can get. And uh, we respond to basically any message or email that is sent to us. 
But uh, but now enough about the podcast. Oh, you know what? I'll, I think we also have. There's another podcast on RPG Fan. Um, Random Encounter, which is on a separate podcast stream from this one, is moving to a bi-weekly format hosted by Derek Heemsbergen, and he's been doing a killer job with it. So please also uh, subscribe to that feed and listen to Derek talk about more current games than Retro Encounter. Yeah, give him some love. He oh, deserves yeah. it. Oh, he uh, does. We, we love Derek. Derek's the best. But. Um, that's enough about Derek. Let's talk about ourselves again. Uh, starting with you, Alana, where can listeners get in touch with you? Uh, so best place is probably Twitter. I'm pretty active on there. Um, I'm at Alana Hagues. Uh, otherwise, if you want to talk to me on, uh, Discord, I'm a diving falcon. So just put me a message or just ping me and I'll likely come running and for two seconds and maybe hide again. But, uh, yeah, I come in and out, but Twitter, the best place and always happy to talk video games. Right on. And uh, Peter, your turn. What's your social media presence? Uh, you can find me at I Have Fury on Twitter. Um, I'm also I Have Fury on the boards that are dead. And if I ever <laughs> if I ever do join if I ever do rip the boards. Um, but I will if I ever do join the Discord, it'll probably also be I Have Fury. Okay, RP the boards. We already did a moment of silence for Rhythm Encounter. Now we have a moment of silence for the RPG fan boards. Okay, moment's done. <laughs> Steph, your turn. How can right, listeners right. find you? <laughs> Uh, you guys will find me uh, on Twitter or a lot of social media as at Dice SMS. If you ever want to talk to me personally, I t- post a lot of cool game stuff and art stuff. And usually I'm the one talking to you on social media. So we've probably talked a bit already. That's quite, if you see a Facebook or Twitter post with a dash ST at the end, that means it's, it's you're talking to our beloved social media maven, Steph. Woo! Do you prefer, do you prefer social media maven or social media mistress? Because the second one sounds a little SNL. <laughs> yeah, you you came up with mistress. That was weird. Social media master. Social media master? debutante. 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 Okay, sure. Or how about how about my how about maestra? Is that better? No. Okay, no, no it isn't. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, okay. Steph is our uh, chief of social media. Alana is our chief of reviews. Peter is your chief of news, and I am your annoying podcast host. We are Retro Encounter. Boo. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Good night.